there's no more illuminating time about how the media functions than in the lead up to the invasion of Iraq. The networks, the main corporate newspapers, all beat the drums for war. Whether it was the New York Times or the Washington Post, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, CNN, it's easy to attack Fox and they should be criticized fiercely. But all of them together did it. Day after day, this relentless drumbeat the media acting as a megaphone for those in power. We are not supposed to be an extension of the government. We're not supposed to be the amplifier of the government point of view. We're supposed to be holding those in power accountable. That's why independent media is so important. Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, a media watch group did a study in the lead up to the invasion. They looked at the four major nightly newscasts, NBC, CBS, ABC, and PBS NewsHour with Jim Lehrer. There were 393 interviews done around war. This was right around Colin Powell, then Secretary of State, giving his push for war at the UN. The two-week period, critical period, when the media is, as Noam Chomsky says, manufacturing consent for war. 393 interviews done around war on the four major nightly newscasts. Only three were with anti-war leaders, three of almost 400. It's astounding how many people in this country were opposed to the invasion, given how little that point of view was expressed. I mean, when we look at the anti-war movement, and I don't mean in the formal anti-war movement, I mean in uh, people who just don't believe in it, uh, people in the military, people in intelligence, the traditional peace activists, everyone together across the political spectrum, if you look at them, we're not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the corporate media. And that has to change because media are the most powerful institutions on earth, more powerful than any bomb, more powerful than any missile. And the Pentagon's deployed the media, and we have to take it back.